of Amalek and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And Samuel said unto Samuel, Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. And there, now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold unto the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it unto it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. I have read 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 17 through 29. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning, God. Oh God, we just want to come and give your name the praise. The glory and the honor that's due unto you, God. Yes, now, God, we come to you on this morning, God, with a heart of thanksgiving. We come to you on this morning with the heart, oh God, of praise. We come to you on this morning with the heart of repentance, God. God, we thank you, God, for keeping us last night. And we thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. We thank you, Father, for giving us the activities of our limbs. God, we thank you for keeping us one more day. Now, God, on this day... God, we will worship you. Yeah. We will praise you, yeah. God. We will glorify you, God. Yes, oh, God, for if it had not been for you, God, on this morning, we would not have opened our eyes. Now, God, we got a lot to give you praise for. Yeah. Yes, we got a lot to thank you for. We got a lot to give you honor for, God. Hallelujah. And, God, we won't give you nothing less than what you deserve. God, we ask you to anoint this service, God. Anoint the praise team, God. Anoint the choir. Anoint the ushers. Anoint the sound room. God, just anoint anyone who has partake. But God, anoint each and every one of us individually, God. We ask you to anoint our pastor this morning, God. Oh, God, we ask you, God, to touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, God. God, whatever she need this morning, we ask you to give it to her, God. Oh, God, we ask you even to bless, oh, God, oh, God, her husband this morning, God. Oh, God, anoint him this morning, Father. God, we ask you, Father, God, to do have your way, God, and do what you will have to do in this service. God, and then we will give you praise. We will give you glory. God, we magnify you by clapping our hands even right now, God. Oh, God, sending up, oh, God, a sound of praise in this place, God. For you are worthy, God. You are worthy, Jesus, to be praised. Now, God, we ask you to do these things, God, and we'll be so ever for, careful to praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. Amen. Come on, let everybody say amen. Amen. Come on, let everybody say thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and clap your hands like this this morning. Whoa. Anybody grateful that you can call God a friend this morning? I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He called me friend. Let me hear you say that. I am a friend, yeah. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. And sing it like you mean it. Oh, who am I that 
you are mindful of me. That's you hear me.
have a friend like Jesus. I said, is anybody glad to have a friend like Jesus? He's not like man. He won't walk out on you. He'll be right there. He's there in the midnight hour. He'll dry your tears. He'll hold you. He'll rock you. Oh, yeah. Anybody glad to have a friend?
part that I remind myself every day, I know that he'll never walk out on you. No, never. That's the promise, y'all. No, never. Every situation I'm facing right now, I know that he'll never walk out on me. No, he won't. No, never. No, never. Can you lift your voice to say, he'll never. He'll never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. No, 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 no. Yes, he will. Through every tear, every pain, every sin. One more time, I know that he'll never, never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. No, never. No, never. Why can I say this? Because. through. 
the witness, he'll pull you through, yeah. Just let him pull you through. Pulling me 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 through. Come on, can we celebrate that it's God pulling us through? Come on, let's celebrate him pulling us through. Come on, can you reach your hand up and let him pull you? Ha, ha. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. In the words of Evelyn Terrence T. A. G., he will lift you up if you have to reach. Why? It was Jesus pulling us through. We celebrate a good God. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I greet you this morning with Jesus' joy. And I came by to remind somebody that we've been made endure for a night. But joy is coming in the morning time. It's morning! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. And we thank him for being here today. And I say good morning to each of you. Amen. I made it through the night. I thought it was bad enough yesterday to have to funeralize somebody I consider to be my friend and a family member. Then while I was there, they were texting me to tell me that another friend was transitioning. And then his wife texts me two words, he's gone. And so I thought about it because he called for me last week and he told me, he says, Addie, sis, this is how you put it, you don't have to come, I'll be here till next Thursday. But I told him, sis, you called for me, I'm coming now. And so I didn't make it Wednesday because we have Bible study, but then Thursday I made my way, and I'm telling you, I ain't never driven from Littleton to Chapel Hill on them back roads. But I got to my brother that day, amen, and spent some time with him and his wife, who I didn't know, who understood him. I thank God from that one meeting with her and her husband, she honored me enough to know that I was close enough to him that she would do it. And then last night his daughter called me on the phone and reached out to me and said, Miss Addie, we need you. So I just came by to let you know this morning, I need to know that the Lord is really pulling me through. And then I recognized the sovereignty of God because on my way to see Mike, and y'all, it's cold, Chapel Hill, if you ever go to Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill is probably one of the worst places to go. But while I was there, I had to stop by to see a lady named Tanya Rich who had been there for over a year. Jesus. And to look at Tanya, she said, well, Pastor, I'm glad you came today because I'm going home tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God. She said, I'm ready to go home now. She said, when they sent me home before, I wasn't ready. And then she still got some days ahead of her to recover. And we're going to pray that whatever's going on, that they say she can't eat food, that God begin to work a miracle in her body and work some miracles out here in medical science that she might be able to eat again. I believe God. But they gave her some orange juice, and she was taking a medicine. She could only take a couple of swallows. Tanya sw swallowed that orange juice and said, mm, it's so good to me to take her medicine. She said, because I can't take my medicine with water. And to think that she's been down a whole year and the only thing she could have, she said for her birthday, they gave her a couple of spoons of pineapple. And here we are, we take eating for granted. We take walking for granted. We take our hands for granted. We take our own mouths for granted. When you see people can still give God praise in their situation, I really understand that song that says, I won't complain. 
So I'm grateful that I called Tanya this morning myself to make sure she was home. And Tanya said, I'm home, Pastor. I said, girl, I thank God. Amen. Amen. So God is sovereign. He allowed one to come home. And he took another one home. If you don't know Mike, Mike was our musician, the Bishop's musician at Peace Memorial in Shiloh for many, many, many years and played for so many people. But I'm grateful to have known Mike, and I'm grateful to know that when I left him, he was in a good place. Amen. And he understood, and he texted me the next day and said, Sis, thank you for coming. He said, you know, there are people in the world that say they love you and say they will be there for you, but then when they actually do it, it makes it really come home to you. So today we're going to lift this heaviness. I guess I'm about as heavy as anybody right now. But y'all going to pray me through. Is that all right? And we're going to give God praise, amen, for what he's doing. Amen. I thought about something. I got a, a, a note as I leave. I'm going to go ahead and let the rest come up. But I thought about it. Um, Minister Story sent me a note and said, Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go back to work. And she said, I'm ready. I need some people to help me with Pretty in Pink. You don't know the number of people's lives that those folk have worked together to touch. And when you think maybe it's not a lot, but when you have a program whose main goal is to help get some funds together to help people who are battling with cancer, it's such a blessing. Amen. So maybe that month they don't have to worry about whether they choose to go to the doctor or pay their light bill that we're able to help them pay a little bit. That is such a blessing from the Lord. So I say that to each of you to say, let's continue to be grateful for what God has done for us and know that each of us have been called to be a blessing to somebody else. And so I just want to thank God for all of you who are here today. I thank God for the ministers of the gospel. You wave your hand, all ministers. God bless you. I bless God for those in training, three of which will preach their initial sermon on this afternoon. <laughs> And I'm grateful that all three of them are here this morning. Amen. So we got to do something in here today that they might be encouraged on this afternoon. So please come back. You don't even have to leave the campus. Debbie got some stuff he's trying to work on. Amen. I think the hospitality got some stuff and the evangelism got some stuff. So you ain't got to try to worry about it. It's different strokes for different folks. Just hang out <laughs> on holy ground and let's celebrate with them that God has called them into the gift of ministry. And I am grateful for them trusting me enough and God allowing me enough to be their leader. So if you keep it count, don't worry about how many preachers, because the last time I counted, there's still a whole lot of sinners in the world. And how are the sinners going to hear the word except those who have been called to preach the gospel will go out and spread it to the world. Amen? Amen. So they get ready. They get ready to get sent out, y'all. Amen. Some might pastor, some might evangelize, some might prophesy, some might teach, and some might... Pastor. Yeah, I think I did that. Apostles. Amen. He gave some. So all of us ain't going to do the same thing. We've all been equipped in different areas of ministry. And God will use us to his glory. Amen. All right. So come on, let's celebrate Jesus as we invite up. Amen. Sister Shauna Stacker with our welcome for this morning. Amen. Amen. Good morning, New G. Good gracious. She did some of my welcome. Devin, some part of my welcome. So, do we have any first time visiting friends? If so, would you please stand? Ooh. And I'm gonna come around with the mic because we can't pick it up. If you don't mind telling us your name and who invited you. Tamika, oh, it's my daughter, Andrea. Christian Church, coming back to the front, where our wonderful apostle is, Addie M. Harris Rawls, I'm sure you all know her. And what I was going to ask was, 
um, if all the ministers or apostles or preachers, MITs, would stand for just a second. And part of the welcome was um, we have a generous plenty of ministers, apostles, preachers, teachers, ministers in training that we need to, if you don't have it right with God, our altar is wide open at all times and there's plenty of people here that can help you get it right with God because we put off a lot of things today and do them tomorrow when tomorrow never comes. So get it right with God. There's a song that says, and do it now. Get it right. Get it right with God. And you are welcome. Good morning, New G. Morning. All right, I would like to share just a few announcements with you. Um, so as Apostle mentioned, please come back this afternoon at 3 p.m. and join us um, in our MITs that will have their initial sermon. So our MITs that are uh, doing their initial sermon this afternoon, if you don't mind, can you please just please stand? All right, so we have MIT Telly Joyner, MIT uh, Daquan, and MIT, my sister Danielle. So please come back with us from a powerful word of God. So I've already put it on you three, okay? All right, awesome, awesome. All right, so um, this week also we will have Word Wednesday. And that will be on, um, on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, mark your calendar. We have several events that are going on. The Zebulon chapter of MLK Celebration will host its annual choir concert under the leadership of Brother uh, Devin Atkinson, <clears throat> excuse me, and that'll be on Sunday, January the 20th at 3 p.m. And also on next week, the New Generation Mass Choir will sing during the Johnston Afro Ministerial Alliance. And this will be at St. Peter Church of Christ, and that is at 7 p.m. And on January the 19th at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., the Dreamcatcher Celebration will host its annual Dr. MLK Celebration, and this will be at Triple S. Um, there will be an oratorical contest, and there will be an expungement clinic and other fun activities. You don't want to miss this event. And so I believe they are desperately in need of male participants. So if you know of anyone, please call Attorney Whidbey, who is upstairs with us today. Mr. Antoine, please give us a wave. So anyone wants to join that event, please see Mr. Antoine. Our NGCC calendar is posted on the church website. Um, so please visit us on the church, church web, web page and email us for a copy that can be sent to you electronically. Um, and then it will also send a reminder to your electronic device. Um, there's also a church app. So any questions on the church app, we ask that you please see Elder Marvin or Brother Chris Everett or Deaconess Lorraine Ruffin if you need technical assistance. A hard copy will be available for those who do not have electronic access um, during the members meeting, which we have scheduled for the fourth Sunday, immediately following morning worship service. And also, if you desire a record of giving for last year's contribution, we ask that you please make a notation on the back of your offering envelope and turn those in to us. The women's ministry uh, will have a meeting on next Sunday, immediately following morning worship, and this meeting will discuss the 2019 activities. And also on next Sunday, just to give you a heads up, Blessed Hand Balloon Creation will have a display um, to show their various products. So again, that'll be next Sunday, um, so that you can put in your respective orders for that. And on January the 17th and 18th at Campbell University, there are going to be two plays. One is called The Telephone, and the other is Trial by Jury, and I believe Elder Marvin Rawls is in the Trial by Jury, um, and the showtimes are, so on Thursday, it's at 9.30 a.m., and then at 8 p.m., and then on Friday, it is at 8 p.m., and I believe that event is free, correct, Marvin? Okay, that event is free, and again, that is at Campbell, so next Thursday, 9.30 a.m., 8 p.m., and then on Friday at 8 p.m. 
And as Apostle mentioned, the NGCC Cafe is open today. Um, Brother Devin has a list of goodies that he'll have available for sale. Um, just to highlight a few, barbecue sandwiches, uh, pasta plates, um, brownies, and other baked goodies as well. And the hospitality also has some items too during that time. Campbell University Athletics is hosting a Faith and Family Day um, for, a men's basketball, for men's basketball, and that will be on February the 2nd at 2 p.m. We're asking all lo local churches in the area to participate and for their congregation to come out and cheer them on. There will be a basketball scrimmage at halftime. Representing New G will be Deacon Ronald Moss and Muhammad Halim. All right. So Deacon SV has about 25 tickets that have been donated by the Campbell Law School. Um, because of that purchase, NGCC will also have a table on the concourse pregame pre so that we can share information about our church and our ministry. Um, tickets are open to New G Youth first. Uh, once the tickets are gone, the cost is $7. So please see Deacon SV. Deacon SV, if you don't mind, please can you wave your hand. Please see Deacon SV if you're interested in attending that event. And also, Ms. Dakia, can you stand, please? Where are you? Ms. Dakia is running for Ms. Jabberwalk 2019. <laughs> so I'm just going to highlight a few items about Ms. Dakia. Or Ms. Dakia, would you like to share it, or would you like for me to? Yeah. You want to share it? Okay. All right. Okay. Um, she's the daughter of Denise Williams, and she's proud to announce that she, uh, that the Johnson County Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta has invited her to participate in that event. Um, the Miss Jabberwalk Scholarship Pageant um, is a program that includes an abundance of educational, cultural, and social opportunities for participants in, in a night of elegance. She is a senior at South Johnson High. She is currently employed, and she participates in activities here at NGCC. Um, as a Miss Jabberwalk contestant, she will receive uh, a percentage of those funds will go towards her post-secondary educational expenses. She is planning to attend col college after high school to fulfill her dream as a veterinarian. And she would like to attend North Carolina State University and use her skills and her abilities to work with animals. So what can we do? We can help her by being patrons. And so they, uh, the levels include platinum, $150 and up, gold, 100 to 149, silver, 50 to 99 dollars, bronze, 25 to 49 dollars, and as a patron, a dollar to 20, 24 dollars. So whatever we can do to be a blessing to this young lady and encourage her on her academic endeavors, let's please do that. That concludes the announcements that I have. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Let's don't forget, uh, Thursday morning also, Seniors on the Move is going to the play at Campbell. We'll be leaving at 8.15, sharp. Amen. That means if you're not here by 8, he's going to leave you. All right, can I get one more child to stand up so I do this the right way? Miss Brittany Stanley, you stand up, baby. Um, Brittany mailed us a letter, and it's in the back. We will read it next Sunday. Um, Brittany is also a contestant in the Miss Jabberwalk, so we want to give it up for Delta Sigma Theta. That's right. Um, so Brittany mailed us a letter. We'll hear more from Brittany on next week. Um, these kids hang out. I love these children, so we want to support them. And I want to say to all of my dear sisters here today, happy Founders Day, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Amen. We might not have been first, but we the last. Amen. All right. So to my sisters in, in Delta, I love you all, and I appreciate what you do. Amen. These young girls are going to be doing some things throughout this next few months. We're going to let them have a cafe Sunday. Each of them have one. We want to support you. We want to encourage you. And the thing I like about it is if you ever pay for a child in college, let me tell you, it used to be pretty good, but college is pretty expensive. So whatever help each child can get to help them along their way, that's good. And so sometimes maybe I can't write each of them a check for $2,000. But I can give them a check for 25, and if my 25 connect with your 25, then they put those together, then we wish them well on their journey. If you've never been to that pageant, it is awesome to see these young ladies dance with their fathers or father figures and to watch them as we put them forth as young ladies of virtue in our community and future leaders in our community. So I applaud them. All right, so then on next Saturday, please meet me at Dreamcatchers at Triple S. 
All right. Uh, we will be there. New Generation has so graciously said we're going to provide the lunch for our children there that day. So we're going to have hot dogs and Bishop Special. If you don't know what Bishop Special is, that's tacos in a bag. All right. So we're going to have it on with our kids. I think there's a hip hop artist that's going to be there for our adults and those who have trouble and they're thinking about getting their records expunged. There will be an expungement clinic. So that's the time to come where he'll have lawyers there able to look at your records and tell you what you need to do to get your stuff in order. And it's free. Y'all got me? Amen. So um, if you're willing to get some help, they're willing to help that day. The children will be speaking in the oratorical contest. So those kids that did that, I want them to be there. Uh, Mr. Whitby, can we get a couple of tables out there for some of our young business people here, our entrepreneurs, even at a young age? All right, so Crystalyn, if you're available, come on out there with your t-shirts. And we want all our young people to, to highlight, if you got other arts and crafts and business ideas that you're doing, it, it, we want them to know that the dream still lives on. And then it lives on in our children. So let's make that a day of celebrating who our young people are and, and, and let's have fun. And then I challenge all of us to maybe look towards going February the 2nd. I'll share my birthday with y'all and go to the Campbell basketball game and at least stay through halftime scrimmage. Um, that morning we have girls talk with the women's ministry. Um, and it's gonna be exciting. We're gonna deal with, um, they're gonna talk about, y'all will talk more about what you deal with, but I don't tell them what I want them to do. So we're gonna be doing that. But we're gonna have girls talk and spend some time just getting to know one another as sisters in the ministry. And then um, the next time we're gonna have girls trip. Now I don't know where that trip gonna be, but we're going on a trip somewhere. And we're gonna have some fun. I like that. And then the third one, we, we'll figure that one out. So let's look forward and let's get excited about what the Lord is doing in the work of ministry. Amen? All right. We're ready to go. Come on, choir. Let's have a moment of fellowship real quick so the choir can get up here. Amen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If y'all pray with me, we'll get on out this morning. Is that all right? Amen. So we can be back this afternoon. announcement. Amen. I got a quick public service for service announcement. Good news, good food, and good times. There's a new restaurant called the Gospel Cafe in the old White Swan building in Pine Level, North Carolina. Renee Anderson is the chef and owner. Again, good news, good food, and good times. So um, she's done that. Do we know Renee? We know Renee. Oh yeah, they can cook, y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sister Renee Anderson, that's Miss Nona's girl, Nona's sister, and amen. So these are uh, Princeton ladies who are there working. Um, Nor yeah, Norvest and all of them. So I know these ladies. So they're open today. Good news, good food, and good times. Amen. But we got Nin GC Cafe Fe open today. Same choir. <laughs>
blood will heal. The blood will save. The blood will raise. The blood will change. 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 Come on, clap your hands. Come on, little say change. The blood will change. The blood will change.
Hallelujah. As I was listening to that, I said, that's one for the recording. Oh, Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Amen. Can we put our hands together and bless a good God? Amen. 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 Choir, you can come down if you would like. Come on down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on, let's give him praise. Give him praise. Praise God. Amen. Amen. As we transition, and oh Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Amen. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Thank God. Amen. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Wow. Wow. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Hey, my master, tell us. Hey, my master. How excellent is your name in all the earth. Amen. Amen. It's good to know the name of the Lord. The Bible says it's a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are saved. Amen. And we bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Today. Amen. Y'all need to help Mr. McCray. Praise God this morning. Mm. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. When true worshipers worship God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I don't need the music. I just need to know that I can get a prayer through. I can get a praise through. Oh, God, I can make a sound to the Lord. Amen. And so we honor God. Amen. There's some folk among you that you see as mighty men and women of God. And when they praise them, oh, God. Y'all know that's how it used to be when the old saints would lift their hands up. You could just feel the body lifting up the hand. That's the kind of anointing we need now. Not one that we manufacture, but one that is true, spirit and in truth. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Ah. Woo. Yes, sir. Woo. No. No. Woo. Woo. Ooh. There ought to be a difference here because we've been praying in here all week long. Oh, God, we've been worshiping all week long. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. 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 Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Amen. Yes, sir. That's good, right there. Yes, sir. Right there. Right there. Right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The wind of Lord. Do y'all know that the wind is representative of the breath of God? And God is breathing in your atmosphere right now. Mm, oh, God. Ah. Breathe, my God, breathe.
Lord. Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you can, but I praise the Lord today. Amen. 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 Let's continue also as we move forward to pray for Sister Lisa Toon and Brother Fred Foreman and family in the passing of Sister Lisa's uncle, Mr. Gadet. Amen. Those services, the wake will be Friday night at Santa's Chapel. And then the funeral is Saturday in Havelock, North Carolina. We continue to lift you up. Excuse my head, but don't know it ain't in my heart as I pray for your family. Amen. Amen. She just dropped her off from work. Amen. It transitioned so quickly on her. But God is a keeper. And we thank God for it. Amen. Amen. So y'all reach out this week to Sister Lisa just to keep her encouraged. Amen. And to let you know we love you as a church family. Amen. Amen. All right, we go into 1 Samuel 15. I bless the Lord for his presence and his power in here. Oh, God, I missed right up. Anybody else messed up? Mm. Ooh. Yes, uh, messed up. And amen. And for those that say you can't feel the power of God, I want you to tap right in right now to the power of the Holy Ghost. Be released in this place. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, amen, 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 amen. The banners are waved, flags are banners. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner, is waving in their presence. Amen, amen, come on real quick, I'm not going to be long, I just want to share a word real quickly with us that I want to bring clarity to the preach word on last week and finish the message. Amen. Amen. So this is part two. Amen. Of accountability 101. Amen. We had read in our hearing our scripture text out of 1 Samuel chapter 15. I think she began at verse 17 and amen. Travel down the way. So that's where we're going this morning. Is that okay? Amen. From accountability 101 part two. Amen. Amen. That would be 52 parts to this. If you got 52 Sundays in a year, this is a year of accountability. Amen. Y'all got me? That'll be 15, 52 parts. Amen. And I tell you what, you know what accountability comes exposure? Yes. Have anybody experienced an exposure this week in your life? But you can't let the exposure destroy you. The exposure comes so that you might know what God requires of you. Amen. So we are grateful for exposure. Amen. So I need to warn you, accountability, you doing what's right still may not mean that you won't be subjected to some things, but God is exposing some things. Amen. And when they get exposed, you ask for forgiveness and you move on about your business. Is that all right? Don't you wallow in where you are, but get up from that point. Amen. Amen. And when God points something out to you, you're going to see even in this conversation, look how long it took Saul to say he was sorry. How long it took him to acknowledge his wrongdoing. Had he done it from the beginning, this still don't mean there may not be some results of that. Amen. But you got to understand what relationship means with God. Amen. Amen. So we're going to move forward out of our text today. Amen. Last week I told us three points, I believe, that said, amen. Amen. Wow. Wow. Three things I left you with last week is that the first thing I said is that most leaders ask you questions that they already know the answer to. So, amen. So, you ain't got to really try to figure out how you're going to fix it. Say, so you are, y'all know, just like your children, you ask them a question, you're just trying to really see if they're going to tell it because you already know the answer to it. Uh huh. Same thing, with God, with us. Same kind of relationship. Y'all with me? Amen. The second thing I said, if we think we are rejecting our leaders, we're not rejecting the leaders, we're actually rejecting the Word of God. Amen. And then the third point I made with you is stop trying to reinterpret what God says. That's a big one for me. People will try to reinterpret what God said. Amen. Try to make it make sense to you, and you know it said what he said, but you know how you try to go back and justify it and work it around what was said? Amen. If God said it, then it's settled. Y'all got me? Amen. So y'all with me? So we get to the point today is I want to look at some things still in this text because it's a lot of text to be unpacked. Is that all right? Amen. There were some crucial mistakes that Saul made. Amen. The first mistake he made was he mistook his assignment. 
All right, y'all with me with that? Verse 1. <laughs> On 15, 1 Samuel 15. Verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people and over Israel. What? That, just that verse right there. The Lord sent me to anoint you, Saul, to be king over who? Whose people? Who's his? Saul mistook his assignment when he was anointed king. He felt like the people belonged to him. Oh, y'all got what I'm saying here. And, and many of us mess up when God gives us an assignment. We take it unto us to be personal. But I came by to let you know that you're not my members in this church. You're God's members. Amen. And so a lot of us will mistake the assignment that God has given to us because we take it personally unto us without realizing that we are handling God's people. So then the warning comes to me, be careful how I handle the people of God. Y'all following me? Saul mistook his assignment and became puffed up in who he was as king that he forgot that these are God's people. Y'all with me? All right, y'all going? Amen. So, as a result, this is saying to us that Saul even had headship over him. Wow. I got a head. You got a head. We all got someone that we are accountable to. So no matter who I think I am, I am accountable first to who? So understand, don't mistake your assignment. All right? All right. So then he did not heed divine instructions. All right? Because he mistook the people that belonged to him. So then he didn't listen to God. Y'all with me? Y'all y'all like we didn't cover this last week. So he did not heed divine instruction. Watch what happens. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Voice of the words of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Hear them. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Hear the instructions. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he lay wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have mm -hmm. and spare them not. But slay both man, woman, infant, and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. Right there. So then we got to understand his instructions were to go and utterly destroy. We need to heed divine instructions. What were the instructions to Saul? I need you to go and destroy everything. Now, what's the first hint that he didn't do what God told him to do? Move real quickly. Verse 8. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. And Stop right there. He took Agag how? That's the first error. Because if he was told to utterly destroy, then he didn't need to look for a trophy in the process. A lot of us, when we get instructions from God... We seek to find the benefit it will have to us, and therefore we messing with things that have been forbidden to us, and then we pay the price of it. Mm. My first hint to you today, I ain't going to say point is, be careful how we value things. It may look good to you, but it might not be good for you. Be careful how you look at stuff and say it's got value. This is what that text is really saying to us. And be careful how you look at stuff and say it has no value. Because your assessment may not be God's assessment. Y'all listening to me. Now this out of this text. It's not my opinion. Keep reading a little bit. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. Mm -hmm. and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Mm -hmm. But Saul and the people spared Agag. Then guess who got on his side? It's bad enough for you to commit things you ought not be doing, but then you get some people on your side. Huh? What I keep telling you, follow me as I was. If I ain't following Christ, then you better follow something else. As I follow the instructions, help me follow the instructions. If you catch me in error, then you need to come with love and respect and say, hey, hold up. Hmm? 
The people joined in, uh-huh, and then they started making an assessment. Read. And the best of the sheep and the oxen and of the fatling and the lambs. They figured what they wanted to keep, uh-huh. And would not utterly destroy them. And they decided if he can't take the king, which is the best prize we see, then why should we worry about, we're going to keep everything we think that has worth to us. Y'all hear me? Uh-huh. But everything that was vile and refused, they won't. Mm -hmm. They destroyed utterly. They determined what was worth something and what was worthless. Amen. One in one, wrong choices will displace you in the kingdom. Wrong choices and assessments will displace you in the kingdom. Amen. Y'all want to see how quick that displacement came? Huh? Saul did not turn, did not follow God. He turned away and did not follow God's choice for him. Amen. And then immediately the Lord came to Samuel and said, verse 10 and 11. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, uh -huh. It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. I regret that I have made him king. Yes. For he is turned back from following me. Simply because he did not carry out my instructions. Wow. You ever felt like that when you give someone some instructions and they come back, they did the exact opposite. You tell them, go buy me some Tide and you come back with some Ajax. <laughs> and your first excuse is the Ajax was what? And I got you some what? Change. That's making it real to us. Um, doing what you want to do and not what God say do. Y'all follow me? Amen. They came back and they came with the result. He said he, he didn't do what God told him to do. So then here he comes trying to justify the choices that he made. Amen. And then, then, then I got another question real quick right there. The first one is don't value stuff. The second one is how can you purport to give to God what already belongs to God? How you going to give me something that was mine in the first place? I want an award for returning back to God what God said was already here. Y'all don't want me to get on ties again, I know. <laughs> Go back and read what David said. Who are we to give after this sword? Further in Samuel, he'll come back and say, For all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. So the people justified not following after God because they spared what they thought was best so they could give it back to God as a sacrifice, but it already belonged to God. Tell your neighbor, you're not sacrificing, doing what you're already supposed to be doing. You ain't sacrificing to get up on Sunday morning and come to church. The Bible said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it. Oh. Yeah, Jesus. Y'all ain't with me, are you? Somebody got to start the, the crying to God that there's some things I'm going to make a commitment to you and nobody's going to shake me from that foundation and that commitment. Amen. So stop being deep saying you're giving God what already belongs to God. Well, can I finish? <laughs> Come on. All right, Brian, let me tell you where I'm going. Go to verse 17. Amen. People want to give you something already belonging. Y'all know y'all got people in your life like that. They want to give you something, and you the one that gave it to them. Hmm? That's like borrowing from a spouse. You can't borrow from your spouse. How are you going to borrow from your spouse? How are you two supposed to be what? So how are you going to borrow for what already belongs to you? But the reason why our marriages are destroyed and we're in trouble is because we got all these secret places and secret... That's marriage 101. But we're talking about accountability. Why can't you trust your spouse with what you have? 
You can't drive my car. I can't drive your car. That's my car I worked and paid for. But when you got married, you all cried for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health. Amen. So why your spouse want to reject you when they sick? Amen. I don't just need them when I'm doing well. But honey, sometimes when I can't get up off the bed, I need a shoulder rub. We have got to quit allowing the enemy to destroy what God has already blessed. Amen. I'm trying. Read. Verse 17. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? See, don't allow God to go back and remind you what he gave to you. Samuel told Saul, when you was nobody, God made you. Don't think when you get where you are that you got there by your own. God made me who I am. God kept me who I am. And therefore, don't get where you're going and act like the same God that delivered you when you didn't have nothing is not the same God you're accountable to. See, too many people get what they want from God. I get my piece of paper. I get, oh, oh, I'm trying to help my mentals this afternoon. Oh, I got it from a now so I can go do what I want to do. I came by to let you know I'm going to come get them back. Because when the whooping comes, it won't come on you. The whooping's coming on me. <laughs> Read, son. When thou was little in thy own sight, yes. was thou not made the head of the tribes of yes. Israel? And did not the Lord anoint thee king? Mm -hmm. And the Lord sent thee on a journey. So it reminded me, look, you were nobody, and then I came by and anointed you, and then God set you in position and put you to be the head, and then um, God sent you on a mission. Amen. Every one of us have been sent on a mission to go ye make disciples. No matter, it ain't just the preachers, all of us are called to make disciples. Amen. We're supposed to produce after our own kind. So every one of us have been commanded by God, and I'm sending you into a place, and every time you go there, you're not going to be received. Just because you want to go, do good don't mean people are going to accept what you're trying to do. He said to us, when I send you on a mission, I need you to first be delivered from the people's faces. Amen. Why? Because everybody ain't going to look good at you. Many people are going to try to have a spirit called familiarity and tell you who you used to be. But you got to be straight with God. I know you sent me on this mission. Amen. And when you gave me the mission, God, you understood what my strengths and what my weaknesses were. And therefore, God, I might can't do it like somebody else. But God, I thank you for sending me. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Come on, let me bring it in. He said, look, I need to tell you everything. Don't you understand now? I'm not commanded as the apostle of the Lord to tell you what God told you to do. I'm only here to confirm what God has already spoken to you. But don't you know God gives me your whole history? He lets me know. And therefore, here is the leader, Samuel, the priest of the Lord, begin to speak. And for those of us that watch with me this weekend, this past week, amen, seated in heavenly places, you understand who Samuel was. They said Samuel was a transitional figure who had been sent in the earth realm as God allowed a transition from the judges to the kings. Amen. And he understood that Samuel had an assignment. Thank you, Archbishop. That assignment was to speak to two main people that we read about. The first one was Saul, who was the divider of the kingdom of God. The second one was, was David, who was the one God sent to gather the people back together. But don't you understand? You are here on purpose that God has a reason for you that when God saved you God anointed you he equipped you for what he needs you to do stop walking around saying I don't know what I'm supposed to do but you better open up your mouth and decree to somebody the God I love and the God I serve want to save you he wants to make you whole again and it may not mean that you get everything back but thank God when you get in a relationship with Christ you become a new creature Old things. Amen. As a matter of fact, some of that old stuff you want back, you may not want back. Whew. 
Yeah. He said, look, 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 look. I gave you something to do. Amen. Then he gives us a question. Read something fast. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? Why didn't you listen? Mm-hmm. But didst thou fly upon the spoil and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? Why did you not obey God and make a quick hurry to go do what you wanted to do? That's a good question. Well, if I told you to get destroyed, I told you to stay away. I told you to let it go. I told you to stand still, but you still moving. He says, why didn't you listen to me? Because you were so anxious to get the plunder. You want to prove something to somebody else. Amen. Don't you know the Bible said if you got a gift and you wait, wait on your gift. Amen. You want to move into what everybody else told you to do. And you sitting here trying to be a prophet and I called you to be an evangelist. You're trying to be a pastor, but I want you to be a teacher. Huh? You're trying to be an apostle, but I called you to be a, 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 a helper. Because some things you got to learn at the helping stage before you can learn at the, the, lead, the, the lead stage. Don't you understand? Some things you got to do in the trenches before you can sit there and walk in the palace. You got to understand, if I'm going to take you to the palace, you got to learn how to survive in the pit. Come on, somebody. <laughs> If I'm going to take you to the mountaintop, you better know what it is to be in the valley, Lord. Because it's in the valley that I grow. I want the title, but you better learn it's more than a title. You got to get the teaching first. If you're going to get anywhere, you got to learn how to get taught where you are. Let me finish. I got to get, I got company. So you rushed on the plunder and you did evil in the sight of God. Oh, I'm trying to help us. So be careful how you value stuff. Don't you displace yourself from the kingdom. Amen. Because here's what happens when he got displaced. Come on, read real quick to 24. Mm -hmm. And Saul said unto Samuel, yeah, I have, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. He told a lie. Hmm? And I have gone the way which the Lord has sent me. Mm -hmm. And have brought Agag, the king of Amalek. I got what I thought you would want, the king. Yeah. And I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. And I destroyed the rest of them. But the people took up the spoil. But they wanted the sheep, the cattle, and the best. Yes. To sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. All right, let me tell you my second point. Partial obedience is disobedience. Partial obedience is disobedience. Whew. Do I need to explain that? Huh? Full obedience trumps selfish motives. When God blesses you, there's always a test. You can pray about all them jobs you want to. Promotions and raises, all you want to. But there is a test. Is your conversation this? I ain't even gonna deal with money in the church. What's your conversation when you get a raise? Are you still poor mouthing? And if you really realize that even though you didn't have a raise, you survived. So then, why he don't give us some promotions? Because once I give you the promotion, you're gonna keep the same mentality. Most of us as parents, when we try to take our children into a greater place, a better place, where we be in it, most of them are whining and complaining about you moving out the old neighborhood. Matter of fact, they can't keep their tails out of the old neighborhood till they get in trouble. And we try to hang around the old neighborhood because our children are familiar in the old neighborhood. I'm trying to help somebody now. And God said, I want to take you to a new place. And the problem is we allow our children to keep us where we were when we're trying to progress and get where we're trying to go. And most of the children that get caught up where they used to be, find themselves in trouble, and then when they get to their senses, they wish they had realized that their mom and dad was trying to make it better for them. I'm trying to help us. When we get ready to move to something different, we want to complain to what we were used to and what we were comfortable in, and therefore God can't bless us because we want to hold on to what was old, and God said, utterly destroy what that was, and understand I called you to a new place. There's some friends you got to let go. There's some acquaintances you got to walk away from because in this next season of your life, God is calling you to a higher level of accountability, and maybe your assignment is not to help them. Maybe he was 
was just to plant a seed for somebody else to come and water. Mm. I kept the best to sacrifice. Watch this next verse, and I'm almost finished. Read. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord is great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, mm -hmm. as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Y'all catch that one. To be obey, obedient, is better than, yes? And to hearken than the fat of ram. To pay attention is better than me getting a fatted ram. Because hmm? then this is what the deal is. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is like the sin of divination. And divination is an attempt to tap into demonic power. So divas, watch out. Seducing powers is of the devil. Whew. I ain't getting no amen with that one. Divination is a sin. So why identify somebody with what was sinful for you? Ooh. That ain't what it means, Pastor. So you get your own don't your own definition. Uh-huh, read. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Defiance is like wickedness and idolatry. Pushing back. You, there's always somebody got something to say. And then there's somethings you need to get out of your life. If you can't tell me nothing positive anytime, then I need to let you go. If I can't preach something positive to you, why keep preaching? Amen. We're living in a season now with accountability. I talked the other night. It's not laying folk out and fussing them. It's pushing and encouraging folk to reach their destiny in the Lord. Idolatry. Y'all know what that means? Exalting someone or something, including your own will, above God. So Saul had instructions. Destroy everything. But what he did, he said, we're going to give you a sacrifice, Lord. In other words, I'm going to give you a little piece up, Pastor. Don't worry about it. I'm going to give you a piece up. And some of that stuff you know you ain't done right about it, you don't need to give me a piece of it. <laughs> if you don't pay your tithes, you don't need to bless your pastor. I can't bless you like your God can. You know what his word say? Obedience. Time to come in. <laughs> Somebody try, you'll work it out later. It's better for you to bless the kingdom than the kings in the kingdom. Well, yeah. Lord, I done asked y'all to bless me. Then turn around and say, you better bless God before you bless me. Hmm? So he gives us a warning. Read. But because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. Y'all have rejected who? When you reject the word of God. You displace yourself in the kingdom. Because your will is greater than God's word. When your work is greater than the work of the Lord, you're rejecting your position in the kingdom. Because God's word, be you steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the, it said word. That's what the scripture said. It didn't say word. Somebody go find it. They say what? With K. Work. <laughs> work of the, the Lord's work. Read. But because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, mm -hmm. he has also rejected thee from being mm -hmm. king. Yes. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and his words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voices. 
Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the so Lord. So he asked him, come back to me to go to a place called worship. But watch the reply here, and I'm getting ready to finish, really. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee. When you get yourself so far out there, don't confess too late. Because there may be a place you go, I can't go back with you as your leader. Samuel said, I can't go with you. Wow, this is deep to me, y'all. I can't go with you because you have rejected the word. The Lord has rejected you from being the king. Watch this. And you know what? And it's still the word of God prevail because Samuel then had to do what Saul was instructed to do and go kill Agag. What am I saying to us today as we become accountable? I'm accountable as your leader to hold you accountable. You're accountable as my followers to hold me accountable. And as we hold each other accountable, we need to understand that our positioning in the kingdom is, is affected by the decisions and the choices that we make. Amen. So I came by this morning to encourage us in Accountability 101. Make sure you're in the right place, the right position in the kingdom of God. And don't let folk tell you you don't deserve what you get or you don't deserve to be here. That's God's choice. I don't know what his kingdom looks like. I said on yesterday, amen, people looking for a place called kingdom and it's a position. People looking for that place and it's a position. Make sure you don't lose your position in God's kingdom. Amen? I don't know about you, but I'm trying to hold on to mine. <laughs> and, and, and as long as the Lord allows me, I'm going to try to hold on to you holding on to mine. Amen. But don't be so rebellious that you lose what God has called you to do. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Perhaps you're here today and you don't know Christ in a part of your sin. Can you rest on your feet for a quick minute? Amen. That I might extend to you this invitation to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I've got. That's an old one. Everything I am. Everything I'm not. Everything I'm not. I'm yours, Lord. I am yours. Try me now and see. Try me now and see. See if I can be. See if I can be completely yours. Can we do it one more time? Oh, I'm yours, Lord. Everything. Everything I am. Everything I am. Everything I am. Everything I'm not. Everything I'm not. I'm yours, Lord. I'm yours. Try me now and see. Try me now and see. See if I can be. Come on. See if I can be completely yours. Every head bow. God, we thank you and God, we honor you for your people who are here today. God, we pray now in the name of Jesus that we will become more accountable in the year of 2019 to you and to what you have said to us. Help us, God, that you might open up our understanding and open up our minds that we might be what you have called us to be. God, let us not be content as the church that sits in a door every Sunday morning behind stained glasses. But God, we pray that you would compel us to be the church that you have sent into the world that we might seek those who had lost at all costs. God, we thank you for that. And God, we honor you today for everyone in the sound of my voice. We pray that this word will begin to sink into them, oh God, that they may understand what it is you would have them to do. God, we bless you and we honor you today. God, now let your word be rhema, that we might live by your word. We thank you and we honor you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. I'm your... See 
if I can be complete. One more time, oh, I'm yours, Lord, I'm yours. Everything I got, everything I am, everything I'm not. Is there anybody goes, Lord, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see. Try me now and see if I can be. See if I can be completely your. Come on, can we put our hands together and bless the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. Can we give God praise for our apostle, Apostle Addie M. Harris Ross, who delivered the word today? Come on, we can do better than that for our apostle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're thankful. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Let's give it up for Deacon Rawls in the balcony also. Hallelujah. 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 It's giving time in the house of God. Can we get excited about giving this morning? Hallelujah. That was a weak praise. Can we get excited about giving? Yeah, that's better. Amen. To give God a portion of what he has given to us. Amen. Ask the Lord this morning, what shall I give? If you need an envelope, one of the ushers will be happy to bring you one. Amen. God is doing something in this season. Amen. Amen. And I don't want God to do it without me. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Before we give, while we were in worship a minute ago, before Apostle Minister, we were talking about the winds of God. I heard the Lord begin to speak and said for every contrary wind the enemy tried to put in your lives at the beginning of this year God said when I was blowing I was blowing out every contrary wind and I'm beginning to blow new life in you that this is your season that you are going to live and live and not die and new life is hitting your body because the Bible says when the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, God said, I come to give you life and that more abundantly. God said, this is your season of abundant new life, says the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So when you get your gifts in your hand, if you signify by standing, amen, amen, amen. I'm giving electronically today so I'm holding my cell phone. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Thank you, G Light, for joining us this morning. We hope you are enjoying the service and you are empowered by the word of God from our apostle, amen, hallelujah. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Oh, great things. Come on, say like, I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great. I'm expecting great things. Oh, great thing, great thing. Get in your mind what you need God to do and just prophesy over and say, yeah. I'm expecting great thing. Oh, I'm expecting great. I'm expecting great. I'm expecting great thing. Oh, great things. One more time, I feel it. Say, I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting. Oh, I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things, great things. Father, we pray now that as we bring our tithes and our offering to the storehouse, God, that you will begin to bless us, God. God, we thank you for the ability to give, God, and for even those that desire to give. God, we pray that you bless them 100 full. Now, God, we pray that you receive these gifts and these tithes because all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given unto thee, and we decree and declare that this is our year and this is our week, that we are expecting nothing 
nothing less than great things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you have first fruit today also, if you put them at the altar so apostle can pray over them, amen. First fruit, there's no, we didn't put a number on it. We didn't put a number on it, just whatever the Lord leads you to give. And we also have our change for change, amen, also there, amen. So our choir is going to come around. Upstairs, can you please come down? Our two outside rows will go, and our middle aisle will go last. But you may be seated, and we'll let you know when it's time for you to go. Oh, I'm expecting great. I'm expecting, oh, oh, great thing. Amen. If you want to give electronically online, we ask that you consider sowing. Amen. So we can keep bringing to this every week. Amen. I am expecting great things. 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 Our two outside roads, can you stand and face the aisle? Oh, oh, great thing, yeah. Say, I'm expecting great things. I'm, I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great Oh, great things. Oh, yeah, in my life, you do great things in my heart, doing great things. Middle aisle, can you please stand and face the right? My eyes have not seen. I choose to believe it. Yeah. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Oh, oh, great thing. Oh, say I'm expecting great things. I, oh, oh, oh. I'm expecting great things. Yeah. Oh, great. To great thing in my home, you do great thing all around, oh, all around, all around. Decree with me. Eyes haven't seen. I, I choose to believe. Eyes haven't seen. Eyes, I choose to believe. Say, eyes haven't seen. I choose to believe. My eyes.
face haven't seen eyes have, but I choose oh breathe amen we thank you for your liberal giving amen on this evening amen we ask you to come back tonight and hear the first set of our initial sermon preachers can we give it up for them one more time <laughs> hallelujah Amen. We want to be a blessing to them. Amen. This afternoon. Amen. So they can go buy them a robe so they look good when they come up here to preach. Amen. Amen. So we ask that you bring a gift. Amen. I'm starting off and off with $20 on tonight. So come on. If you can't come, can you leave a gift? We really want to be a blessing to them. Amen. So they can get them a robe, maybe with their name on or something. Every little dollar helps. Amen. Amen. So bring a seed with you. We want to be a blessing to them. And we give God praise for that. Amen. Amen. It's time to go. Come on, let's rest on our feet. Thank you all for being here on this afternoon. Amen. I am excited. I need all of my, um, I believe Pretty Pink is going to meet right after service. You're going where? Here or downstairs or where? Downstairs conference room. I need my elders before you leave. See me real quick or I'll just text you your assignment this afternoon. That's all right. We'll do it that way because I don't hold anybody up. We got three hours. That's a good break, didn't it? I did it. <laughs> Amen. To, to Brother Barbara, thank you. It's always good to see you and your wife and your baby. It's good, glad to have you with us today. Amen to everybody. Hey, Annie girl, that's my girl back there. Hey, boo-boo. Amen. I love her. That's my sweetie pie. Amen. It's so good. Tiffany, that's the best gift you could have bought me today is my girl. Amen. Amen. All right, so I'm glad to see you. Good to see Otis and Yolanda. God bless you, my friends. Amen. Amen. Take the Lord with you everywhere you go. Amen. Let's come back and show support to these people that continue to help us in the work of the church. Thank you again. Sight, Sound, Ministry, Choir, Ushers. Amen. To everyone on your post of duty, I love you all with the love of the Lord. Amen. All right, Nick, where Nick? Nick, come on. Pops got to get to the door. All right. Amen. Uh, lift the hands. We, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the word that came forth. We thank you for everything that took place in this service. Now, God, we ask you as we leave this place, but never from your presence, that you will keep us, bring us back safely, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. amen. Chris, we're going to leave it on too, okay? Uh, thank you for joining us this morning, G-Live. We pray you were blessed. See you soon. Leave everything on.